I and Christ sound alike. Cry and Christ are words that go together well. When the young woman who had been caught in adultery was brought before Christ, John 8, verse 3, he desperately wanted to save her life. He desperately, desperately, desperately wanted to save her. But he couldn't save her, for the law of Moses clearly demands that adulterers, and that includes prostitutes, be put to death. So it was only natural for him to turn to God the Father in prayer, uh, in passionate prayer, uh, and produce the uh, outpouring of emotion where tears flow easily. Yes, as he stoops down to pray with his face uh, facing the, the ground, uh, his tears would be freely flowing and uh, hitting the ground and uh, making identifiable wet spots on the ground. But he didn't need for people to notice that he was weeping. So he covered up the teardrops in the sand. How? By moving his finger, pushing the sand onto each wet spot. So it looked like he was riding in the sand when he was not riding in the sand. He may not have been riding in the sand at all. Instead, he was covering his secret tears as soon as they fell from his eyes. Paul the Apostle wrote of Christ crying while praying. Quote, In the days of his flesh, he offered up prayers and supplications with fervent cries and tears. Hebrews 5, verse 2. Uh, correction, verse 7. God answered Christ's outpouring of tears and enabled him to save the woman's life while still being, while still keeping the law of Moses. Stone her, Christ may have said, but, quote, let he who is out without sin cast the first stone. John 8, verse 7. By saying that, he was adding a new requirement to the law of Moses. This same woman most likely equals the sinner woman that showed up when uh, at a Pharisee's house when Christ was uh, over was invited uh, to have a meal. That's Luke 7, 36 through 50. She cried as she kissed his feet, and, uh, and wiping his feet, now wet, with the hair of her head. Christ said of her to the Pharisee that he was dining with, she loves much because she has been forgiven much. That's Luke 7, 47. Now, if she's the same woman that had been caught in adultery and that Christ uh, had saved from being stoned to death, that would explain what Christ meant when he said uh, she had been forgiven much uh, and she had been spared much. Uh, uh, namely, stoning 
uh, be, namely being stoned to death. This same woman could very well uh, equal Mary of Bethany, who was sister to Martha and Lazarus. That's Luke 10, 39, and John 11, 1. For Mary of Bethany is known to have anointed Christ's feet um, with a uh, spikenard, which is what it says back in, <clears throat> also in, about the woman that uh, came to the dinner uninvited. She uh, brought uh, perfume and uh, uh, anointed uh, Christ's feet with the perfume. That's John 11, verse 2. This same woman, the woman caught in adultery, could even equal Mary Magdalene. There is some evidence that Mary Magdalene equals the woman caught in adultery because we read that Christ cast, quote, seven demons, unquote, out of her. That's Luke 8, verse 2. Seven demons may be a way to suggest or point to the seventh commandment, which is the one against adultery which extends to uh, prostitution. <clears throat> so the implication may be <clears throat> that the words seven demons means that Mary Magdalene was guilty of committing adultery or prostitution. There's evidence that uh, <clears throat> Mary of Bethany and Mary Magdalene may be the same person because they are never spoken of together in Scripture. Uh, if they're the same person, that would explain why that is. If these four women are all separate individuals that appear and then uh, are not, not, not heard from again, uh, then there is disjointedness in the gospel. But if the if these four women are actually one and the same, then there is continuity, and there uh, is uh, you could you could say character development. Uh, to borrow a phrase that uh, <clears throat> refers to um, uh, uh, um, writing a novel or writing um, uh, stories. Uh -oh. Considering the situation that Christ found himself in when the woman was brought to him, I'm talking about the pressure he was under to find a way to save her life without uh, being disloyal to the law of Moses. The explanation I am presenting about why he was fingering the sand uh, makes as much sense as the traditional interpretation, which is that he was riding on the ground. <clears throat> Wouldn't you agree? To send me comments or questions, email <clears throat> joegracegrace at gmail.com. J O E G R A C E G R A C E.